In this video, we are going to see about Gate Aerospace 2024 Flight Mechanic Solutions. At Gate Aerospace Academy, we provide coaching for Gate Aerospace exam. And the programs that we offer are Gate Aerospace Classroom program, Gate Aerospace Online program. In this online, we provide live interactive classes and as well as recorded classes. Gate Aerospace Postal program, Gate Aerospace Test Series program. We are dedicated coaching center for Gate Aerospace exam. We don't deal with any other branches. We are India's best institute that is consistently producing results from our classroom program students. You can see all top results every year consistently. Students who are looking for Gate Aerospace 2025 and 26, we are starting a new live online classes from 18th Feb 2024. And students who want to enroll in this batch can have a discount of 10%. Now let's start the solutions of the flight mechanics questions that are asked in Gate Aerospace 2024. So the first question is, which of the following figure represents the drag polar of a general aviation aircraft? So this is the easiest question for one mark. So we know that what is drag polar? The relation between CL and CD is known as drag polar, right? See here you can see that and at zero lift axis, the drag polar is a parabola. He clearly you can see here, it is a parabola, right? And with it, with its axis on the zero lift axis and its vertex is CD naught. What is the CD naught? Parasite drag coefficient at zero lift, right? And this is the drag polar equation CD equal to CD naught plus CL square by pi AR. Here you can see that we have negative CL and positive CL. In FM performance, we usually study drag polar associated with positive CL. So we can see that this part in FM, we will study the, okay, we will study the drag polar associated with the positive CL. So I think four options are given for this question. So the right option for this question is this, okay, CL and this is CD, okay. So this is the right option for this question, okay. So now let's move to the next question. Now let's read and understand this question and, and let's read and understand this question. An aircraft experiences a net vertical ground reaction of 15,000 Newton. During landing, the weight of the airplane is 10,000 Newton. The landing vertical load factor defined as the ratio of initial load to the weight of the aircraft. They are asking us to find what is the vertical load factor. Okay. See what is the net vertical ground reaction here. So we know that what is the net normal force? Net normal force is equal to W minus L. So they have given us this data. Okay, this data is nothing but 15,000 Newton. Okay, and they said that weight of the aircraft is 10,000 Newton. They are asking us to find what is N. See here. L is the lift of the aircraft, D is the drag and W is the weight and R is the resistant force and T is the thrust. We know how to calculate the resistant force also. This is mu R into W minus L. This is nothing but net normal force. But they, here there is no need to find this R. Directly they are asking us to find what is the landing vertical load factor. And they have given us that initial load is nothing but here. Uh, uh, no other data is given. So we are considering that net normal force is nothing but here initial load. So N equal to W minus L, which is net normal force acting on the aircraft by weight of the aircraft. Okay. N by W. Okay. Here already they gave us the definition of what is vertical load factor. So W minus L is nothing but 15,000 Newton divided by 10,000 Newton. So this is nothing but 1.5. So 1.5 is the right answer for this question. Let's read and understand this question. Which of the following statements about general aviation aircraft while operating at a point Q in the VN diagram? So after getting this data from most of the students, we, uh, we, are, we confirmed that they asked a question based on this point B and they said that this point is nothing but Q. And students who studied this VN diagram can easily solve this question. We know all conditions at this point B and this point B is called or this point Q according to the question paper is called maneuver point, maneuver point and velocity corresponding to this maneuver point is called corner velocity, corner velocity. Now let's read the question. So this is a MSQ question. The aircraft has the higher turn rate. Yes. 
and the aircraft is operating at CL max and aircraft flying with minimum drag and aircraft has smallest turn radius. Okay. See at this maneuver point, both load factor as well as CL are at maximum values are, are at maximum values. So based on this point, option B is right. Okay. And, and uh, about this point, okay. And this point corresponds to this manner point corresponds to the smallest possible turn radius. So here smallest possible turn radius. So the aircraft has smallest possible turn radius. So this option is correct. And largest possible turn rate or we can say higher turn rate. So this option is also correct. Now the option C you can see aircraft flying with minimum drag. This is wrong. See after this maneuver point the aircraft will have a structural failure. Okay. That means the aircraft is having more drag. It is not that the aircraft is having minimum drag. Okay. So this is an easy question. Those who studied VN diagram uh, in detail they can easily solve this question. Okay. So this Q is the maneuver point and we know that the velocity at this point B is called this is corner velocity. Okay. And at this point B or according to question paper Q, we know that load factor as well as CL are at maximum values. So according to this CL max is correct answer. Okay. And, uh, and this point corresponds to and this point corresponds to the smallest possible turn radius, smallest possible turn radius as well as largest possible turn rate or higher turn rate. So one A, B, D are correct. Only option C is wrong. Okay. Now let's see the next question. Now let us read and understand this question. As per the international standard atmosphere model, density variation with increase in altitude in the isothermal layers. So basically they are asking us to asking us what is density variation with increase in altitude in the isothermal layers. So if you see this graph, this is international standard atmosphere with respect to altitude and temperature. Here you can clearly see that in this entire graph, we have two kind of lines. One is inclined. One is vertical lines. Okay. This inclined lines are called as gradient region. So this is gradient region. This vertical lines are nothing but isothermal layers. Okay. Constant temperature. Okay. Isothermal or constant temperature or we can even say isothermal layers or isothermal regions. So here we have gradient regions as well as isothermal regions. Okay. So we know that when we increase the altitude, we know that density decreases. So if you observe this total graph, we have only two layers or I can say that two regions mainly that is gradient and vertical lines or constant temperature lines. This is nothing but isothermal regions. Okay. This is gradient regions. Okay. So we have separate formulas for this to find density and pressure and for gradient region we have separate formulas. So now I will write formula for this isothermal region or isothermal layers. We know that we can find density by using this formula minus G naught by RT H minus H1. One thing is for sure when we increase the altitude we know that density decreases. Here you can see that by this relation the density is decreasing in exponentially right so the right option for this question is c okay it's very simple question and uh, these are the basics of light mechanics atmosphere chapter okay now let's move to the next question now let's read and understand this question for an aircraft moving at 4 kilometer altitude above mean sea level at a Mach number of 0.2 the ratio of equivalent air speed to true air speed and uh, density at sea level is given 1.225 and density at 4 km is given. It's very simple. We know that velocity at equivalent air speed to the velocity at true air speed directly we can find by using this relation. Okay. So this is nothing but density at 4 km divided by density at sea level. So this is 0 0.819 divided by 1.225. So the ratio of equivalent air speed to true air speed is nothing but 0 0.817. So this is the right answer for this question. Now let's read and understand this question. For statements about absolute ceiling and service ceiling for a piston 
propeller aircraft is or are correct so this is a msq question okay see no need to confuse for piston propeller aircraft okay so for absolute ceiling and service ceiling it is almost same for jet aircraft also so they wantedly gave this separate name like this instead of giving you the aircraft to confuse you okay so these two are almost same for jet aircraft also okay let's read the options the air the altitude corresponding to the absolute ceiling is lower than that of service ceiling this is wrong so we know that the altitude at which maximum rate of climb rate of climb maximum is equal to 0 is defined as absolute ceiling right so what is the service ceiling service ceiling is defined as the altitude where maximum rate of climb is equal to 100 feet per minute this is service ceiling okay so from here i know that absolute ceiling altitude is more than service ceiling so look at the second option the altitude corresponding to absolute ceiling is higher than that for service ceiling so this is the correct option now let's see the third option at the absolute ceiling okay so what is absolute ceiling rate of climb the altitude at which the rate of climb maximum is equal to zero right so they are saying that at the absolute ceiling power required for the cruise equals to the maximum power available this is also correct so if you draw the graph i think most of you have done this okay so this is the power required curve okay they are saying that maximum power available so at maximum power available you can see that these two curves are tangent to each other now you can see very clearly that this power available curve is exactly tangent to this curve okay so you can clearly see that at the absolute uh, servicing uh, absolute ceiling power required for cruise equals to the maximum power available so this option is right okay now look at the last option so this two, uh, c option is also right and the fourth option at the service ceiling the maximum rate of climb is 50 feet per minute so this is wrong right so what is service ceiling at service ceiling the maximum rate of climb is equal to 100 feet per minute okay so for this question the right answer is b and c right and if you see this c option at the absolute ceiling power required for cruise equals to the maximum power available i have drawn here this is the power required curve and this is the power available curve okay and this is maximum power available so this curve becomes exactly tangent okay here it is equal and remember that at this particular point we have zero excess power or we can say that zero rate of climb okay thanks for watching this video everyone follow us in the social media and subscribe to our youtube channel to get regular updates from us and try to join our official telegram channel where we post all information related to aerospace and aeronautical engineering like jobs internships and all informations related to aerospace and aeronautical engineering thank you thank you so much